Friends, family, distinguished members of the press, welcome. This is Kenny with T7 Woodworks, and I was tasked with rebuilding this table. It is for an RV, and it appears to be made out of some uh, cheap composite wood material sandwiched between a thin piece of plywood and a real ugly sheet of laminate. I am going to be using this 2x6 uh, construction lumber. It is Douglas fir. And I think that it will give it a pretty cool and rustic look when it's all said and done. Uh, I've already cut them to length, but after that, first order business is to run them over the joiner. Doing this just to make sure that all the surfaces are flat and square. This will be pretty critical for the glue up, uh, ensuring that everything stays straight and in line. Spare you from having to watch the entire thing. Took me a while to do that. And now that I have a flat surface referenced from the joiner, I can run them through the planer to do the other side. This uh, gives me a perfectly square board. Unfortunately, my joiner, the knives had a nick in the blade, so kind of just running them back through the planer to get rid of that nick. It sent a line all through the length of the board. Here I am just organizing each board, uh, kind of picking the best uh, grain structure, the grain pattern through the tabletop. Uh, just kind of more of an aesthetic, make it visually pleasing. Hey, and if you're into this kind of hyper exciting, super thrilling, ultra high paced, fast and fun video, now would be a good time to like and subscribe and share with your best buddies and friends and family and uh, have them go ahead and do the same thing. It would really help out the channel and I would appreciate it very much. What you just saw there while I was babbling along was uh, me adding just a little bit of needed width to the table. And here I will just go ahead and number them so that when I shuffle them around, I know exactly how they go back together. Because I will forget. And I'll spend just as much time doing it over. And odds are it won't be the same. Okay, so I'm running a... Uh, biscuits through uh, in between each one of these boards and uh, I'm going to make a reference line kind of just strike it through the surface and make sure that when I install or put the biscuit slots in they're in the exact spot that they need to be in. A little secret here. Uh, this is really the first build I've ever had to use a biscuit joiner on. Um, I figured it was probably necessary to get one and use it for this particular project uh, with this size glue up just to ensure that the boards don't start to wander on me when I get them under the clamp pressure. Um, I know installing these biscuits will certainly help prevent that. And we'll just go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now I'll just grab my handy dandy glue up board that I made specifically for this, but uh, I will certainly use it on other projects too. I just uh, cut some PVC pipe in half and it works pretty good. Glue ups are always so stressful for me. I feel as if every time the glue is just drying right as I uh, get it onto the board. And uh, I know I have a little bit of time, but just me. Me panicking over nothing. Given the size of this, uh, the length of these boards, I decided it's probably best just to do one at a time and insert the biscuits and put it together, repeat, rinse, repeat. Now, I didn't even use every biscuit slot also, as I'm sure you've noticed. 
took too much time to install them and really I don't think it was necessary. seems the biscuits are doing their job. I probably could have um, put some kind of a straight edge on top to prevent any bowing, but it seems I dodged a bullet there. Uh, the board ended up pretty darn flat when it dried. Get rid of these clamps. And voila! Not too shabby. Now I will assemble my flattening jig. I made this thing up. Um, the side rails are just uh, pieces of oak. I know it's a pretty stable piece of wood that will stay flat. Um, yeah, it seems to work pretty darn well. Making many passes. One thing to note here and uh, for you guys to be aware of is if you're doing this, watch for that darn cord. There was a couple of times where I didn't realize it until reviewing this video where that cord was like right underneath the, uh, the sled and pretty darn close to the blade. So be aware of that if you're doing this sort of thing. Eventually got to the point where the dust collection was just kind of worthless. Clearly, you can see. That's one side, and I have it flipped here. Just kind of running through, doing multiple passes on this side. Now being mindful of the cord also. One thing I didn't end up showing in the video was after um, flattening this whole thing down, uh, I called it quits for the day and left the tabletop on my workbench overnight. And the next morning I came back in and it bowed like crazy. I'm assuming it happened because one side was exposed to the air while the other side was perfectly flat on the table and uh, kind of just allowed it to do a little twisting motion. So kind of a learning experience for me is if I'm going to um, apply any kind of uh, slots or any support braces on these tables, do it the same day you do the glue up. Uh, this way you can kind of prevent any of that stuff from happening. It wasn't terrible. I ended up just flipping it over and uh, leaving it for another day or so and it sort of leveled out and then I did the I inserted my my braces and uh, it was just fine there you saw me uh, kind of just going through it and, and putting in my curves and let me tell you I worked the crap out of that jigsaw you know what the little fella pulled through Tell you what though kind of a workout for me too this was uh this was challenging i really didn't have a better method um to cut this out this was really the only option i had and now the fun begins uh, just kind of spending a bunch of time here with this belt sander getting the uh, router marks out of there <laughs> Getting the router marks out of there while putting in sanding marks that were also a challenge to remove We prevail as always I Actually did a pretty good job. I think I had 80 grit on there and it really allowed me to get a flat enough surface to do some upcoming router work here are the braces that I should have applied uh, the day before, but didn't. 
and just kind of marking, getting them in the right spot. One thing to note here, which I did not record, is that I already accounted for the location of the table legs. So that won't be an issue when I go to mark the holes to install them and find that there's a big stupid brace in the way. And now I'm just cutting them to length and I will clean up the edges too. And you get to see my disagreeable fan in action. Now I'm just using a little uh, punch here just to mark my holes. Actually kind of hard to see pencil marks on the SC channel. And I get to be a metal worker for 30 minutes, or however long it took me to do this. And here is the fun part, uh, kind of just making a little jig here to uh, route out the C-channel slots. This I found to be pretty challenging actually, just getting everything lined up exactly. So once I did, it was, it was smooth sailing from there. These uh, two slots on the outside uh, will be deeper than the one that I'm going to put in on the inside. This will allow the C-channel to sit nice and flush on the bottom of the table. And this is a good time to drill the holes for the threaded inserts. So I chose to use uh, just one inch wide C channel for this table because I knew the table wasn't huge. Um, but going forward, I will probably use 2 inch C channel just because the slot on the inside was pretty thin for the threaded inserts. And uh, I found it to be a little challenging to uh, install them. And I am getting so much tear on this pass through. Uh, the spiral bit I'm using uh, is kind of threading up with the rotation of the, the router. So it's allowing for all the, the wood fibers to just kind of flare up like that. Um, ideally, I would uh, use a spiral bit that spins or that threads kind of in the opposite direction to uh, prevent that from happening. But I sanded it out and it ended up being okay. And I could chamfered the edges too, just to allow the C-channel to fit in nice and, nice and smooth. Here's a great example of what I was talking about. Uh, you can kind of see a little little crack right there for them. Um, I ended up using epoxy on the threads of those, so I'm not really concerned about any, uh, any pull-out or anything like that. And here we are now just kind of going through and re-sanding the surface. Uh, I found this, this method um, to be a little bit crude, but it ended up working really well. I, I knew I was going to come back through with the router. I put a 45-degree uh, chamfer across the entire bottom of this table. So any imperfections with that sanding, um, I would kind of remove a lot of it anyway. And then uh, planning to go back through it all and hand sand it. So 
I wasn't super concerned about that freehand belt sander kind of unorthodox way to clean up those edges. But you know what? It also worked really well. So just uh, let me be me. No judges. So I was super excited to start this uh, this here junction of the the table build, um, and it and it ended up being a whole lot of fun. But it ended up also being very meticulous, um, and just applying all of this black epoxy to every single crack and all the all the existing knots on this surface was just. It was it was meticulous. There's a lot involved. There's a lot of work, a lot of attention to each little each little uh, hollow in the table had to be filled. A uh, big error that I made in this process was that I didn't seal, I didn't apply a, a clear sealant to uh, all those knots beforehand. So I was really concerned that all that black dye was going to seep in and blotch the entire. Uh, the entire knot that I filled with black epoxy. Huge concern of mine. And right now I'm uh, just mixing up some faster drying epoxy and I'm going to go back through and uh, go over the entire table and fill in any other little imperfections that I may have missed or that may have created after the fact when it dried. And I'm going to sand them flat and flush. This is also where I was going to find out where whether or not the black epoxy seeped into those knots. And it seems I dodged yet another bullet and it did not. So it came out okay. Here we're just doing a quick quarter round, round over on the tabletop edge. And I'm going back through and sanding the edges um, just to make sure that that unorthodox sanding method did not leave any uh, vertical scratches or vertical sand lines in the side of the table. One method of sanding I should have used here, but it doesn't seem like it uh, had any negative effect that I didn't use it, was the pencil method. And I could have just gone through and scribed this big old scribble across the entire surface of the, the table and then sand it off. And then big scribble, across the tire surface to then sand it off. I've always hated applying the Maker's Mark. It's just one of those things where if you get it right, great, but you can really mess up a workpiece by, by you know, just applying it at a weird wonky angle or so, or anything like that. So I'm always super careful when I do that part. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that I had already kind of roughly laid out where the aluminum mounts would go. So I ended up creating this janky frame type thing. And based on both tables centers, I kind of used that as a reference as to where the mounts would go exactly. Um, and it seems like I nailed it, but uh, you know, I haven't heard any complaints. <laughs> uh, and now we'll just mark the holes to mount those suckers. And again, I am going to use threaded inserts and replace the old uh, wood screws that were on the original tables. I just feel like the threaded inserts are cleaner and just a more secure way to do it. sure they're all tightened up and not going anywhere. I ended up applying just a little bit of wood glue to each one of those threads just to ensure that they don't kind of back out over time. We wouldn't want that. And now I'm raising the grain. 
going through the the entire surface and spraying it with water. It's amazing how much of that actually pops up. I don't know for the life of me what that line is, why the water kind of beaded right there. But I ended up sanding it down and uh, it was fine. Went through the whole thing with 220. Get it nice and flat, wipe it all down. And what you're about to see is a stained table. Uh, apparently I forgot to record that whole segment, but I think you could kind of get the picture. I will say I had a heck of a time finishing this table. All I used was a, a lacquer and uh, it was pretty warm in the shop that day. And it was just like, it was drying as soon as I was laying it down. Um, so I kept going over, sanding it, going over and sanding it, going over and sanding it, and ended up uh, with a pretty good finish in the end. But it was real finicky. Real finicky. Going forward with lacquer for me is definitely going to apply it out of a spray gun. I'm not, I guess I'm just not good with paintbrushes. I don't know. Look at me trying to be all perfect. And there is tons of imperfections on the edges that I ended up sanding down using a gray pad. Um, just kind of buffing it out, getting it real smooth and then going over it again. That whole area was, there's a big line right there. It was uh, unsatisfactory to me, so I had to go through, buff it out, go over it again. A word of advice, if you are doing uh, a lot of surfaces like this, get a corded sander. I have three batteries for this uh, sander and cycling them without them all being dead at the same time also proved to be quite a challenge. For some reason, this video came out. It appears to have some kind of filter on it, but it actually doesn't. I, I used the camera's, my iPhone's cinematic mode, and when I imported it into Adobe Premiere, it came through a little funky. Um, so this wasn't me trying to be clever with some wacky filter. It's just, this is how it came through. And I tried to import it multiple times with multiple files, and uh, I don't know. I kind of just gave up. But there's the table. It looks great. Well, everybody, if you're still with me here, thank you. Uh, this was a very fun project. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed every bit of it, uh, including all the challenges and mistakes and certainly all the learning curves that I uh, I went through. Um, it was It was great to be able to share it, so... Thanks for watching the entire thing. And if you really enjoyed this video, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share to your heart's content. There will be a lot more of this stuff to come, and I'm excited to share it with you all. Thanks for watching.